Hi, my name is John Jacobson. This SR Byte lecture will be on introduction to shoulder ultrasound. So first, a few comments on what normal structures look like with ultrasound. Tendon is hyperechoic and fibrillar, as shown here listed as T, the supraspinatus tendon. The muscle is relatively hypoechoic, indicated here the deltoid muscle in M, and the bone cortex is bright, as shown on the ultrasound. Now, if one point is very important to make here, and that is recognition of the bone landmarks. This helps with our orientation. For example, noting the curved surface of the humeral head tells us where we are in space. And now this looks fairly similar to this coronal or coronal oblique MRI. Now, when performing ultrasound of tendons, we must be aware of what's termed anisotropy. With this artifact, what will happen is the normal echogenic tendon will be artifactually hypoechoic and simulate pathology. Why this happens is the sound beam will come down and reflect off of these interfaces. And rather than returning to the transducer to make the image, it's reflected in a different direction. Therefore, the ultrasound machine sees this as no information. We simply are aware of this artifact and are continually moving the transducer to see if these areas correct or disappear, indicating that that would be an artifact. So when looking at a tendon abnormality anywhere in the body, I put them into one of these categories, tendinosis, partial tear, and full thickness tear. Tendinosis will appear hypoechoic with thickening of the tendon. Partial thickness tears will be incomplete disruption of the tendon, usually anechoic or hypoechoic. Full thickness tears will be complete discontinuity, often characterized with tendon retraction. Now, one must be aware of the anatomy of the footprint of the supraspinatus by MR and by ultrasound. There are essentially three surfaces, the bursal surface, the articular surface, and the greater tuberosity. Indeed, there is a broad footprint at the greater tuberosity where the rotator cuff attaches. We can identify the articular surface by the rounded curvature or appearance of the humeral head also shown on the MRI. Now, if we look even more closely at this footprint, People have described the footprint as being like a bird's beak. That's really not true. It's more like a rainbow where you have the bursal fibers attaching at the bursal aspect of the footprint, the articular fibers at the articular side, and the fibers in between, of course, in between. So how we characterize rotator cuff tears by ultrasound and by MRI, if it is in contact with the articular surface, but not the greater tubera, or not the uh, bursal surface, that would be a partial articular sided tear. There are the terms for this, like rim rent tear or pasta lesion, which stands for partial articular sided tendon avulsion. But call it what it is, it's a partial articular sided tear. Note the cortical irregularity. More on this in just a moment. In contrast, a bursal sided partial thickness tear will be in contact with the bursal surface, but not the articular surface. Note that it is indeed in contact with the greater tuberosity surface, but it's not a full thickness tear because it does not connect from the bursal to the articular surface. Note again the cortical irregularity, an important indirect sign. You can have a tendon tear that's buried within the tendon or in, at the footprint touching the greater tuberosity, but not touching the articular or bursal surfaces, therefore not seen at arthroscopy or bursoscopy. Then you have the full thickness tear, which will go from the bursal to the articular side. Now, when you have a full thickness tear, it can be the entire width of the tendon or it could be more focal. So a side point about cortical irregularity, this is a very important point. For, for example, even looking at a, a radiograph, if you see cortical irregularity at the greater tuberosity surface at the supraspinatus footprint, three out of four patients are gonna have a rotator cuff tear. If that bone is smooth, 96% of those tendons will be normal. So when I look at a radiograph, I will often suggest ultrasound or MRI to evaluate the cuff given this finding. Back to ultrasound, we will look for that cortical irregularity as an indirect sign. If you see cortical irregularity at the supraspinatus footprint, if there's a tear, which there likely will be, it will be at that site. Okay, so what do we look for for rotator cuff tears by ultrasound? Well, the direct findings would be a defect, either hypoechoic or anechoic within the tendon, or possible tendon discontinuity or retraction. Very important indirect signs. The first two are the most important. Cortical irregularity, as I just mentioned, at the supraspinatus footprint. Abnormal morphology of the tendon, meaning thinning of the tendon, implying fiber loss. 
cartilage interface sign in fluid in the joint in the bursa. I'll talk about the cartilage interface sign in just a moment. So here's a partial thickness articular sided tear. We see a well-defined defect touching the hypocoag hyaline cartilage over the curve of the humeral head, therefore articular surface, not touching the bursal surface. Note here on the MRI, which is fluid sensitive. Essentially, these images are inverted, meaning that normal tenon is bright on ultrasound, dark on MR. The tear is dark on ultrasound, bright on MRI. The bone is bright on uh, ultrasound and dark on the MR. So the idea is you, when you're looking at an ultrasound image, you want it to make it look like an MR image and vice versa. It's really the same pathology with ultrasound, but higher resolution. Here in contrast is a bursal sided partial thickness tear. Note the normal convex superior surface of the tendon is now concave as the deltoid dips into the torn tendon gap. So this volume loss or thinning of the tendon is an important indirect sign as is the cortical irregularity. Here you can really see the dipping of the deltoid. The tendon should really be like, like a wheel on a tire rim, uh, but basically this is, this is really flattened out because of the volume loss. A companion case showing another partial thickness bursal sided tear, emphasizing again that rather than having a homogeneous tendon rind going around the humeral head, we have flattening here at the site of the tendon tear. Here's a full thickness tear. Now this one's easier to see because it's filled with fluid. The defect goes from the bursal surface to the articular surface. This is the cartilage interface sign. The normal bright line will be brighter than normal when fluid is touching the hyaline cartilage, telling me indeed this tear does go to the articular surface. Note the cortical irregularity. We look in short axis, we can see the width of this tendon tear, but of note, some tendon fibers are still seen anterior. I would have drawn this tear in like this. Therefore, this is a full thickness tear of the supraspinatus, indeed going from the articulated bursal surface, but it's focal, it's not full width because there's still some supraspinatus present anteriorly, although with tendinosis. Here is a large or full thickness tear. Now this one is full width. So you can see the degree of retraction. There's the cartilage interface sign. There's the cortical irregularity and the flattening of the interface with the deltoid due to volume loss. Here it is filled with fluid on the MR. Now, if we look on short axis, paying attention to the apex of the greater tuberosity, separating the superior middle facets. In this case, the entire supraspinatus is torn and retracted. So this is a full thickness tear, but a full width, full thickness tear. It's another way to, to, to indicate that the entire tendon is torn. Finally, tendinosis, the tendon will also appear hypochoic, but you can see it's more heterogeneous. You can't really define a defect. The indirect signs are missing. There's no cortical irregularity. There's no cartilage interface sign, and there's no volume loss or abnormal morphology. So take on points here. Number one, ultrasound accuracy for rotator cuff is equal to MR. I didn't mention it before. I'm mentioning it right now. You need to have a scanning protocol, which takes practice. I couldn't cover that in, in this uh, talk. Re be aware of artifact, which is anisotropy. Make sure the ultrasound image looks like the MR image and vice versa. You want the tendon in long and short axis without artifact, just like MR. Understand the anatomy, specifically the footprint. Understand the pathology. Where full thickness tears go from bursal to articular surface, partial tears will only go to one surface or will be interest substance. Thank you very much for your attention.